I first came to Cooper Island in 1972 when I was doing a census of all the barrier islands in Arctic Alaska. I always wanted to study seabirds, but I have a fear of heights, and most seabirds breed on cliffs and at various places where it's very scary for investigators to access the eggs and the young. Cooper Island in Arctic Alaska was once a military site. The debris left behind in an otherwise barren landscape has become valuable real estate for guillemots. George de Vocchi has been coming to the island to survey the seabirds for almost 40 years, staying for three months at a time on this uninhabited gravel spit. The birds are so used to George that they tolerate him making surveys of their nests, weighing their eggs and monitoring their breeding success. It's my favorite nest, the smallest one on the island. And there's no eggs yet. This was a colony where I could walk around and flip over boxes. They have been very tolerant, and it feels like having a number of neighbors around rather than some separate population that you're censusing. Black guillemots in Arctic Alaska are in sight of ice for their whole annual cycle. They have two young in the nest that are growing very quickly. They have to feed them around once every half hour or so. So the ice has to be within 10 to 15 kilometers for the parent bird to be able to go out and find a fish and return it to the young. With the retreat of the ice, the birds are having a harder time finding prey. They keep going further and further out with the ice and then finally have to abandon the ice and look for prey in ice-free waters. Horn puffins first started breeding on the island in 1986 and I was surprised to find that I saw them going into black guillemot cavities and prospecting for nest sites and pushing the eggs out of black guillemots. This used to be a large box, but a polar bear wrecked it one fall, and now it's a much flatter site, and it's being used by both puffins and guillemots. And there's a new guillemot egg here today. This is a typical guillemot nest, but it's also clearly a puffin nest because of the feathers that are on the edges of the nest and were brought in by puffins over the past few years when they bred here. And you can tell it was a puffin nest in the past because it's a much bigger cavity than most guillemot nest sites. This egg won't be here later on in the summer if the puffin shows up and displaces it. There's roughly half as many guillemots on the island breeding now as there were 25 years ago, and puffin numbers are increasing rapidly because they like open water. They don't feed under the ice. and they will do very well in the Arctic when the ice is melting. It is clear that retreating sea ice in this area is affecting the seabird communities, but it also brings in unwelcome visitors, which pose a threat both to the birds and George. In the last few years, polar bears are getting stranded here, searching for whatever food they can find once the sea ice is gone. I really became a climate change scientist when I had to be taken off the island by search and rescue because there was a constant stream of bears that had been stranded by the ice pulling offshore. And even though one can analyze data in lots of ways to show how the temperature and the ice and the snow melt have impacted guillemot uh, breeding, when you have something as vivid as the fact that polar bears can no longer find ice to walk on and they're now walking on your island, that kind of makes you a climate change scientist very, very quickly.